Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for Today devotional. My dear friends and brethren in the Lord, we will start a new book this morning in our devotional in the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. I think most of us, if you are reading your Bibles and if you come across with the book of Psalms, you will love it because this book is characterized with some emotional and and expressions of the journeys of the writers, how they express their pains, their sufferings, and how honest they were in expressing all this before the Lord. And these are songs. They, they sung this in the past to express their worship before the Lord. And it comes from their heart. And I hope and I pray that as we journey together in this book, we'll learn to resonate and empathize and be able to express our love in response to what God has to say to us through these words from the book of Psalms. So let's start this morning in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, chapter 1 for today. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not weather. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Psalm chapter 1 sets the tone of the whole book, 150 chapters, but this is the one that will set the tone. There is a difference between a person who is blessed and the person who is wicked or not blessed. The blessed person. So in these six verses, we will learn who is the blessed man. The world has a different view to blessedness. He who has the most of the world's goods and he who has experienced a lot of pleasures given by this world or produced by this world is considered the most blessed. Is it not? If somebody who has a lot of possessions, number of cars, degrees, and he has traveled all around, he has a lot of, of you know, things that you can consider at the like the envy of most people, he must be blessed. And this is the characteristic of our time. There is the current rat race towards a life accumulating all these things, towards a life of affluence. And this is an undeniable evidence that such pursuit marks the world's definition of blessedness. But in the Bible, particularly in the eyes and in the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said that our lives does not consist on the things that we possess. So in other words, there must be something beyond what this world can offer. And this blessedness is only if we know the Lord. How does the Lord depict the blessed man in this particular chapter, chapter 1 of Psalm? He is the one who distances himself from sin and he devotes himself in the scriptures. So negatively, he distances, he distances himself from, from sinful lifestyle from the world, but he devotes himself in the scriptures. Sin and scriptures are mutually exclusive. As somebody says, you cannot love the word and the world at the same time. If you love the world, it will keep you from the word. If you love the word, the scriptures, it will keep you from the world. One negates the other. Should a person be blessed, he must avoid the sinful lifestyle. It's not the world that we, you know, the creation of the world is earth, you know, the things of the world, this world, the creation and the things that we enjoy, like, food like that, that makes you worldly. 
but it's the system. It's the lifestyle that is against God. It starts in the mind. That's why the psalmist said, he does not follow the counsel of the world. That corrupts the manners of the person. You know, he starts with the listening, the counsel of the world, and then he will stand and sit and settle. So that's the, always the progress of sinfulness. Once a person is sitting down, he's already settled eventually. A lifestyle of sin is not a product overnight. It's a gradual process. On the other hand, the blessedness that the psalmist is mentioning here comes about like a growing tree. The person who faithfully reads and meditates God's word is changed from one degree of glory to another, just like a tree. Remember, in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, Paul said that the one who, who is continually beheld, beholding in the glass is changed from one degree of glory unto another. The glass there is the Bible, the scriptures. And the Spirit will use it in order that you will be changed gradually to become more like Christ. The changes are coming from the inside out as the sap is to a tree that is maturing and bearing fruit. We are His branches, Christ's branches. Jesus is the vine and we are His branches. And we are nothing if we don't abide in Him. John 15 verse 5. In other words, as the branch of this tree or the trunk, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, we gradually draw the strength from Christ. And the imagery here is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, just like the branch also, seeping the nutrients. And the absorption of nutrients and water from the ground that will pass through the trunk. You know, this tree is planted besides the water or the river. So there is no problem whether it's drought period or whatever circumstance is. The fruitfulness of this tree is not dictated by the circumstances. Regardless of the circumstances, the tree is fruitful. Thus, a blessed person isn't affected by his surroundings. Sunny or stormy days, bright or gloomy days, his Christ-likeness isn't affected. So my question, my challenge for us today is, don't you like to be such a person, a blessed person, that we will be fruitful? Not because of the surroundings, but because of where we are planted where God has placed us and have a relationship with him. So the picture is, who do you attach with? Like a branch, you're a branch. To what trunk are you attached with? So as a believer, if you have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the branch of a vine. And that vine is the Lord Jesus Christ that he told us in John chapter 15. Apart from him, you can do nothing. We cannot be fruitful. I hope that this will ignite in you or incite in you the, the desire to be fruitful. The blessed man is a fruitful person. And the fruitfulness is not what the world is thinking about. It's the showing of Christ's likeness in his life, despite of circumstances. Moreover, the psalmist continued that his life will continue and perpetuate towards eternity. His life is approved at the end of the day. And this approval of his life at the end of the day makes a difference. Unlike the wicked, he will suffer loss. They are like a chaff, which the wind is driven and will drive away from every other direction. During the time of judgment, they will not stand. They will burn. So this is the wicked life. The wicked life may appear good at the outset because it seems to us that they have all the power, the possession, the influence of today. But at the end of the day, 
they will suffer loss. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is talking about the futility of such person who is wicked and who is not blessed because he's like somebody who is building his house upon the sand that at the time of judgment, he wouldn't stand and suffer embarrassment because he he is like building his life upon nothing, sand. While the blessed person, he's the person who meditate upon the word of God. He listen and do it according to the Lord Jesus Christ during the time that the storm will come because it's founded upon the rock. It will stand. As the psalmist said here, the, the righteous one is one whose way the Lord knows. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Like a person who builds his house upon the rock, and this rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. He will remain and even will be rewarded during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ's second coming. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 12, verse 48. He said, If you reject his word, you have one that will judge you, will judge you, and will condemn you. Because the words that he has spoken will judge him at the last day. So if you reject his word, you are not spending time to meditate, meditate upon God's word in order to do it. We will suffer loss. It's just like building your, your life upon the sand. What a futile and a loss that we <clears throat> can think of. But those who continue to meditate upon God's word, they are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. They will be fruitful at any time. And the Lord knows them. The Lord, the righteous, who are those whose way the Lord knows and determines. By God's grace, let's be sure that we have this relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the vine. We are the branches. We are grafted into him, into his life. Now, my question is, are you sure that you are grafted into his life? Are you a branch of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because at one moment in your life, you have decided to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have been connected with him in this relationship. Remember, it's not about having a religion. It's about having a relationship to him who is divine. Are you related to him? Or with him because you are his branch. Truly a branch because you believe in him as your personal Lord and Savior. Then the promise of the Lord is that if you abide in me and I in you, you will be fruitful. Apart from me, you can do nothing. May it be that we will be pursuing the way of the righteous, the way of the blessed man. And not to be deceived not to be pulled away from the way of the Lord, to be sidetracked and go into the direction of the wicked man. For the Lord knows the righteous or the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Let us pray. Father, we are so thankful for this reminder today. Help us, Lord, not to forget that the most important thing in our lives is not what the world deems as important, but what you deemed as important, Lord. And that is to, to, um, to know you through your word and to hide it in our hearts and cherish this and to obey it. And thank you that you promised that the words that you have spoken, as you said, Lord, these are eternal. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. Lord, let it be that we will continue to have that hunger and thirst towards your word. And that we will grow as trees planted by the rivers of water. That we will bear fruit 
in season and out of season so that we'll be fruitful and prosperous in our lives in terms of living a, a life like the Lord Jesus Christ, victorious, triumphant in this world. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen.